What's up guys? Welcome to the channel today. It's Wednesday, so that is Dynasty Video Day. Today's video is going to be five moves to make going into week four. A couple buys, a sell, a couple guys to add if they are available on your waiver wire. If you haven't been to the channel before and you like what you see at the end, make sure to hit like, make sure to hit subscribe, or comment any Dynasty questions below. Feel free to scroll back to any of the other videos. You will see I respond to every comment. I love helping you with trades or team building things. But let's get today's videos kicked off. Number one, the first buy before week four is going to be buying Justin Fields. I think Fields is a great guy to go and get if you're looking for a QB2 fill-in, a QB3 depth guy. I really like what I've seen from Fields so far. I think it's just a much better situation for him in Pittsburgh as the film shows and as just their record shows with the Steelers being three and oh the number one thing I like about Fields in Pittsburgh is now that the pressure is off of him being the quote-unquote franchise of the Bears he's running more than ever now some of these high flashy running yard totals aren't there from his Chicago days but I think those are going to ebb and flow and he's going to have some bigger weeks but he's just running the offense and Arthur Smith is a much better offensive coordinator than I think we all uh, thought. You know, when it comes down to it, he wasn't a great head coach in Atlanta, but he was a great offensive coordinator for the Titans before he got that job. He resurrected Tannehill's career for that stretch in Tennessee. Looks like he's doing another solid job here for Pittsburgh. Uh, my trade idea here for Justin Fields is moving someone like Charbonnet, who's had a couple big weeks, might be a hotter name and a third. Try to get Justin Fields onto your team. Now, quarterbacks in a super flex league are always tough deals to get. And I'm not going to speak as some overarching guaranteed trade offer for your super flex league, but I would send some offers out for Justin Fields and see if you could get him onto your team. It's possible people have soured on him over the years, or maybe they got him for cheaper this summer and they're looking to just make a quick gain right now. Second guy, uh, it's going to be a sell, and that's going to be Travis Etienne. Just looking at this dude on film, his box score over the first three weeks, it just is kind of dire. The Jaguars don't look like some super competitive offense or elite offense in the NFL. He's losing snaps to Tank Bigsby, and he just isn't playing super well. I mean, I watched a bunch of his runs uh, against light boxes even, and he wasn't even really able to find too much room there. Now, it's not all on him. Some of it's the offense. Some of it's the offensive line. But that is the situation he's in for the rest of the year. So we can't really expect that to change. And I don't really think things are going to turn around very quickly for ETN this season. My trade idea for ETN here is could we move ETN, get Devin Singletary, a guy who's just going to be a fill-in piece, someone just to keep our RB room up, and a 27 first. Something we could do to just reload our team or use that pick to go get something else for us. I would do that for ETN. I mean, I think he's a good player. I just don't think he's ever going to be a great player. So if I could get a first and a usable running back, I would take that offer for Devin Singletary. My next buy is going to be Andre Yosivash. He's filled in for T. Higgins for this first two weeks. And he even found the end zone last week with Higgins on the field. For me, I was on Yossi Voss as a stash player this spring, this summer, and he's beat out to be the number three wide receiver for the Bengals. He's playing over Burton. And I think from what I've seen, he's shown enough that he's going to be probably the wide receiver two on this team next year if they don't re-sign T. Higgins, which at this point I don't think is looking like it's going to happen. They still need to re-sign Chase. They're going to prioritize that signing. And just go back and watch some Yossi Vosh film. He, he's a big body guy. He plays the slot. He's being targeted in the red zone. These are all things we look at as pluses and positives for a dynasty wide receiver. Um, my idea here to try to get Andre Yosivash is just throw out two future thirds, a 25 and a 26 third. You know, I mean, he's had some good games. He hasn't put up these crazy numbers. He has scored. He hasn't put up crazy yardage totals yet or anything. So send an offer to the guy that has him. Maybe he'd love some draft capital. Maybe he you know, he added him off the waiver wire this summer and he, in his mind, this is two free third round picks for a guy he just added. But I think down the line, Yossi Vosh is just probably going to be a starter for this team. I think he's going to be usable for a couple years and I'm willing to make this small investment in him to see if he can turn out to be more. Now, the last two things I'm going to do for this video are going to be two players I'm looking to add 
uh, this week. I picked up a couple of them in uh, waiver wires this week on some of my dynasty teams. So they're out there. Uh, first one's going to be Tyler Batty. I spoke Monday about how I'm not a big believer in Javante Williams in the Denver backfield. Part of that is Batty looked pretty good. Tyler Beatty, Tyler Batty. I, I don't know the exact pronunciation here, but you know, seven for, uh, I think it was nine for 70. He had a big run in the Broncos game. He could involve himself here. You know, these waiver wire pickups in Dynasty Leagues, they're not the same as the waiver wire in your redraft league. You're looking for a glimmer of hope. And I think he showed us this weekend in that three-headed monster on what we don't really know or have to expect from the Broncos backfield. But he earned snaps. He produced with them. Let's see what happens going forward. He is a smaller, more quick kind of back. Sean Payton's used guys like that in the past. So... I like adding him off the waiver wire to see if he turns into anything, even if it's just to move him later this season for a late pick. Last guy is going to be Eric All, tight end on the Bengals. Now, Gusecki's looked pretty good too. He's not on some long-term deal though with the Bengals. Bengals drafted Eric All this offseason. He looks like a good blocker, so he's found himself on the field, and he has back-to-back games with four catches. When it comes to tight end, that's actually not that bad compared to how gross the position is right now. But, you know, he's just an ad. He's a stash. These are guys that I want to put on the back end of my roster and going into next year, maybe he's the starting tight end. You know, that's what I'm looking for when I'm adding these guys on the end of my roster. I'm looking for guys who have the potential to be a starter due to a role change in a future season. Or I'm looking for someone like Tyler Batty who, you know, performed a little bit. Maybe he earns a role and you flip him for a late pick. That's always something I'm looking to do. I'm willing to take third and fourth round picks for guys I'm adding off the waiver wire if I don't see them as long-term assets in Dynasty. Stack those picks. Use those picks to go get the guys you really want in Dynasty Fantasy Football. But thank you guys for tuning in to this Moves to Make video before week four. Uh, If you have some other videos you want to check out, I have some buy videos uh, from the past couple weeks. I still believe in those players, so definitely watch those and see if any of those guys are acquirable in your Dynasty League. If you liked what you saw today, hit like, hit subscribe, shoot me a comment, let me know you enjoyed it. Thanks for tuning in, guys. Catch us on Friday for some flex picks for your redraft league, and uh, we'll catch you later.